All right. What up, YouTube? Ed from 11 Tents here and giving you an update video because I've done a bad job of, <coughs> excuse me, giving progress on this car for a number of reasons. But um, so I figure at the very least, I'll keep doing these updates and explain what we got going on. So as you can see here, this is a lot more together than it's been in any of the previous videos. Um, long story short, I think the last video you guys saw was the head was on. Um, since then, the car has gone to get its exhaust done. Um, let me grab a flashlight here. Which took a lot longer than I anticipated, which is what made this lack of videos happen because the last four or five days has been a bum rush to get as much stuff done as possible but it was well worth it so if we look underneath here you can see the beautiful so we've got coming off the Bimmer world headers directly into a vibrant connector to three and a half inch piping all the way around the back into a vibrant resonator and then finishes off in this vibrant muffler with this really nice turn down it is awesome looks really really cool very excited to see how it sounds but that took about two three weeks to get done which turned into so initially i should be leaving tomorrow morning to go to the dyno um because of scheduling and things like that that's pushed back i'm cool with that um, it's it's saved my ass. So let me kind of go over what I've done. So exhaust is done. Um, we I swapped to a OBD1 style valve cover. That's the metal valve cover with the fill cap at the back. Um, so that I can drill and add these. So these are AN ports, 10 AN ports. So this is for the new kitchen can setup. I got it set up right here. Nice little ventilated unit. So the factory port is tapped in bung with a bung from Seems Legit Garage. So with the higher compression, well, not, that's not compression at all, but the higher revs and everything, I figure I need a much nicer catch can setup. It just barely clears the hood. Very nice. Here's half of my new Bimmer World air intake box. Kind of mocking up and getting all the fittings on here. I got a plug, plug, and plug this still. I swapped the Turner... Sorry, not been wrong. Turner Motorsport Airbox. Swapped his sticker with BMW M Power. I think it looks way cooler. Um, I did, though, if you notice here, there's no more oil filter housing. We have new AN lines now that are going to go all the way along the front of the motor to right there, which then loop down and round to the oil cooler. With the other half of the airbox, it didn't fit. So, and actually this works nicer because before my oil filter was a shorty Motocraft one. Now I can run a deeper, which more oil, more filtering, the better. Um, you can see here the new radiator. Again, this is a Z3M, so it's a thicker radiator. You can definitely tell everything's nice and tight down in there, but it clears. That's all that really matters. So, and then... We've got sitting back in there, it's a total mess. Still gotta clean up a lot of wiring, we're getting there, but we've got the Link ECU, which is fully operational. After some wiring fixes, we discovered I had a bad relay. I was freaking out at first that it was a harness issue, but it turns out we had a bad ECU relay. So thank you to Bob Kobayashi for the late night wiring diagnostics over Messenger, helping me figure that out. Um, and yeah, so harness is on. You can see my roadkill style cardboard list. So um, yeah, we've got coolant in the system. It's been bled in. Oil filter. I ran the motor. I did. The motor has ran. It is running insanely rough. Extremely rich. Um, I know nothing about standalone ECUs. I've gotten basic, cal basic like two things of calibration. This uh, Jim from Castle is supposed to send me over a base tune so I can run this in more. Um, but I was able to rev it up for about nine, ten minutes, get a little bit of a little bit of a putz drive, 
but bedded the cams in. That's the big thing. Because, um, again, I've got solid lifters with the big cams. That's all working exactly as it should. Um, so I changed the oil, put fresh stuff in there, AMS oil dominator all the way. So at this point, yeah, I mean, at this point, really, we are down to... Um, we are down to getting a base tune so I can try to drive it a little bit. I'd love to get a couple of miles on the engine before uh, we head up. Um, plan is in f one week's time, I will be leaving uh, with my buddy Clint. Carl's either going to drive down with us or me is. And I'm heading down to Castle Performance to meet up with uh, Jim from Castle, Travis from GDM Engineering, Michonne from Rabbit Racing Development, and Peter from Alien Engineering. Just guys that are super smart super talented guys that have developed most of the performance stuff that's on this car um, and i get to spend a weekend finally meeting them after being internet friends for so long so it should be very very cool i plan on taking some videos while i'm there definitely getting some dyno runs we're gonna be spending a lot of time on the dyno um again big thing with the standalone ecu it's amazing all the parameters you know in fact let me i'm gonna pause this i'm gonna hook the laptop up change batteries in the camera and kind of just give you guys a quick show of what I'm looking at here. All right, back with a fresh battery and here's what we're looking at. So after many, many hours of watching videos, I know very little. So here's the basic tuning page, but you've got, con and then you've got configuration. And when I talk configuration, I mean every single parameter on this fueling tables, AFR readings, um, idle readings, you set your idle, you control if you want Venos or not, um, which I did say, Venos is completely locked out on this engine, um, literally where you have studs to bolt all the gearing together, it is replaced with straight bolts, completely locked out, the cam is just way too big to have proper clearance, which is totally cool, I think I have some video footage I may splice into this or put a separate video on that, but anyways, it's just, it's amazing, but the moral of the story is it requires a ton more tuning to get all the vari variations done. Now, the cool thing with this, this software actually has an auto-tune function. So even once um, Jim McCastle finishes tuning the car, he's already said we're going to leave that function on, and then the computer's literally learning constantly of what's going on. Um, I'm really excited to use this. Um, it, it's relatively very easy to install with a plug and play system. Um, they're, they're coming down a lot in price for what you can use them for. But yeah, so at this point, it's all going to be down to... So the game plan is, just to kind of let everyone know, I, again, I'm going to try to get as much video footage, but um, we are going to be trying a number of did timing specs. So we're going to be retiming the cams in here anywhere from three, four to ten times to find the optimal timing. What gets the best, what's the best timing setup? It's something a lot of people really don't mess with. You know, they do a basic, you know, a couple degrees here, a couple degrees there, stock, whatever, and then leave it. There's a lot to learn in that, and we're going to mess that up. We're also going to be trying a number. Um, so this is, again, the Turner Motorsports CS CSL-style airbox. Um, let's take the air filter out with it split in half. You can see the runners. Now, these runners are actually slightly shorter, these two runners here, than a stock S54 intake um, to increase better power up top which is where this thing's going to make power. So this, so this is one intake we're going to do. Um, Mission from Rabid is supposed to actually have one of his prototype air boxes designed for this ITB swapped car with him. We're going to try that out. And then we're also going to be trying out um, Travis from GDM's, his billet aluminum, originally designed for mainly turbo setups manifold. Um, his system is actually going to... We're going to have to completely remove the ITB setup when we're there because his is straight runners. But it's going to work the best um, with porting with the porting of his head. So in theory, we should see the most horsepower with that. We may not see the best. And that's the other thing. Everything we're doing, there's two things we're doing. The first thing we're doing is, I hate to say it, the glory run. 
how much horsepower can we make? So we're going to strap a bunch of things on this engine that all it's going to do is make peak horsepower. So um, Travis's billet aluminum manifold and also in general, um, they're sitting right over there, but the six to one headers, the whole point of those is peak power. They're not good for really anything else. Um, it, the the, the mid-range and the down low is going to be not great. It's going to be garbage. But we're, how much horsepower can we get out of this? Um, I mean, that's our big question. The ideal setup for drivability, autocross, track, general usage will be the Bimmerold step tethers, which is what are made up here, and this intake will probably be the best setup for mid-range high end now again i won't have a ton of mid-range and low end um that's just when you do these things that's what happens there's a general reason why race motors don't work well in the street because race motors are designed for high rpm power they're designed for how much power can we get out of it and we really want it all in the upper rev range because otherwise you know you're not using low and mid on a racetrack versus on the street you need low, mid, you need the whole spectrum. Hence, turbo motors today are all very, very small compound style turbos designed for tons of low low and mid-range boost, and then they all peter out up top. Versus before, you didn't hit boost till four or 5,000 RPMs, and still in race applications, you don't hit till four or 5,000 RPMs, and then it's a rocket ship. So, brief explanation of what we're doing and me rambling a bit. But again, the diff we've got in the back, the 370 from previously a 338, we're going to use that to bring back some of the power. So, um, but yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me, base map of the injectors are in. So again, they're 65 pound injectors because and that's what this random wire is here for. I got to, again, I... Stuff's janky done because I'm doing it for testing purposes. I got to rerun this to a proper setup now because this is the 12 volt accessory wire for the flex fuel wiring, which works. Uh, the flex fuel sensor is responding, so we're going to be able to put E85 in this thing and it's going to be cool. Um, yeah. So, and then this right here is my map signal. So, the nice thing with this air rail is you get a really nice literally nipple built in for reference point for air so so essentially i don't have to plug these ports because um there's no it's not reading the air pressure till after the throttle bodies so anything beforehand hence i can run this car with this box completely off and open itbs um <coughs> excuse me but i like to cover them up it's unfiltered air getting sucked in there so um yeah um, but I guess I'll take a quick little video shot. So again, apologize I didn't get all, you know, the breakdown and build videos that I wanted. It was just purely if up until two days ago, I thought I was leaving tomorrow. So it was literally, I felt like a TV show. I felt like a gas monkey garage where it's, you know, if we don't finish this by then, we're going to lose the shot. No, it's just... A bunch of people are relying on this thing to be ready to run a bunch of tests that I want to be able to not let them down and be good. Like, legitimately, we've got guys, I mean, so I'm just outside Chicago. Jim at Castle's obviously up in Pennsylvania. Travels, tra oh, lost you guys, lost you guys. You're literally sitting on a fuse box while I try to put this air box on. It's tight. Even though this fits... It's snug. Um, but anyway, so you got me just outside Chicago. You got Jim and Travis up in PA. You got Mishon, who's just outside Seattle, Washington. And you got Peter, who is about an hour or so out of... I ain't joking when I said this is snug. It is some maneuvering... And this to where it one specific way the whole internet can witness the struggles that I am having trying to get this sucker to hold on I mean the nice thing is it is it
Ah, there we go. I only said that like nine times. There we are. So you are hearing some crackling. I mean, it sits tight against that start tower, which is fine. And then I actually had to shave some of the bottom of the snorkel so that the hood will fit. But it's on. It fits. And that looks pretty... That's cool. That's, that's, that's... Today is the seven-year anniversary of me and my dad pushing this car as a bare open shell into this garage. Um, I'll try to lay over a picture if I can figure that out. But to see where it's come in that time frame, all the different versions of it, and anyone that's known me seeing that, it never stays the same. But it's pretty freaking cool. It's got some stuff on it that I could have never imagined it's going to sound amazing. I mean, this, I mean, we're going for, we're going for E36 GTR, which if you don't know what that sounds like, Google it on YouTube. Um, let's see how that sits. In case of the air rail lines, I'll have to go over that, but just with that baller mason it now, for the purposes too of next week, the hood cowl is not going on. The cover on the fuse box isn't going on. The strut bar is not going on. My X brace isn't going on because we're going to be changing stuff. I need to keep stuff open. But there is the Mason Engineering strut bar I own. So that bolted up. That's spicy. That's going to sound really freaking good. So, anyways, there's a little update video. Um, again, I'm going to be reporting back from Castle when I get up there. But again, for the whole five of you that watch my videos, love every one of you, shoot me a question. What do you want to see? Um, stuff that's going to happen when we get back. Clean up wiring, clean up routing. Um, I've got a set of gauges over there that I need to get put in. I can't remember if I've showed these in the last video. I'm sure I'll find out. But anyways, I'm going to show them again. I got these nice auto meter water temp <laughs> oil pressure, oil temp. Things you want to know, especially with what this engine's going to be doing. Things I want to know. Um, get that dialed in. Like I said, get wiring dialed in and then get an alignment and get this thing on track. Get this thing on autocrosses. Drive it on the street. Just enjoy it. I, I, I love this car. I can't wait to drive it some more. But yeah, there's my quick little update video. Again, at 11 tenths. Um, we're also going to have some more updates on the JPS soon. Um, Clint, if you follow on Instagram, Clint figured out the ITB leaning out issue we were having with that car. We're now having a limp mode issue with that car, but that's almost ready. So we essentially, the first big auto cross is in a couple months. We got lots of time before then, but we want to get these things out before then. So, and then hopefully we're going to get some videos on back to back testing and comparison, some fun stuff like that. So, either way, this is Ed over at 11 tenths. Hit me up Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Let me know. And until next time. Later, guys.